as everybody knows, this has been a very tumultuous year after the December publication of the Katsanos meta-analysis looking at the increased mortality risk with drug-coated balloons. As everybody knows, uh, the first thing that happened is the regulatory bodies in the U.S. and abroad reached out to the manufacturers to truly understand was there a risk as stated in this trials. And the FDA came out with a warning, well, an initial statement in March and then looked at their, the data from the U.S. manufacturers. And their first pass, they did not find the 98% relative risk of mortality through five years that Katsanos did, but found a 58% increased risk and really felt that there was something to the signal. The meta-analysis done by Katsanos looked at data from published trials, so it didn't have individual patient level data. So we reached out to the five U.S. manufacturers of approved devices using Paclitaxel. So Medtronic, Philips, Cook, Bard, and Boston Scientific. We then used the PRISMA method for looking at an individual patient level data meta-analysis. We excluded the Boston Scientific product because it wasn't randomized to a non-Paclitaxel population. So they randomized their data to the Cook Zilver PTX or not. So using the randomization methods, we looked at individual patient level analysis and presented our data at an FDA panel meeting in June. Our first pass on the data set, having the individual patient level data and harmonizing the data, reduced the FDA's first look of 58% to 38%. We then worked very hard with the manufacturers to try and vital statistics on patients who'd been lost to follow-up and took the loss to follow up rate from over 20% to just above 10%. In doing that, we've now shown and presented our data that we found still a 27% increased risk of mortality with paclitaxel devices in US randomized trial through five years. We also looked at the dose response and found no dose response. And there's not one unique method of mortality. So the questions that remain is if there's no one mechanism, whether it's cardiovascular, cancer-related, infection-related cause of death, is that risk real? So really the change that we've seen since the Viva independent data meta-analysis of a 27% increased risk is we now look at bigger populations. In real-world populations, we're not seeing that risk continue to perpetuate and really those results being a relative risk of one. So as a practitioner, you're really going to look to see what the FDA said. So the FDA has had now three statements. Their most recent statement, if you really boil it down, it says at least in randomized data, there appears to be risk. But really, it, it, it asks for a discussion with the patients about the risks and the benefits, or really the informed consent. And it really says to try and use this in what they call a high-risk population. The problem is that they don't give guidance of what a high-risk population is. And the randomized data sets do not treat high-risk patients. They generally have patients with less than a nine centimeter lesion length and patients that are generally going to do well in claudication. And so it really is that you should have a discussion with your patient and have an informed consent and let them know that this possibility is out there and really trying to define in your own practice what is high risk. Originally, I think everybody looked at this process with gloom and doom, and we've seen a huge downturn in the use of paclitaxel for patients with peripheral arterial disease, despite whether it's drug-eluting balloons or stents, showing a 30% improvement in the outcome of keeping the vessel patent. But I do think this has led to really light it in the tunnel. As we've seen both CMS, the FDA, European regulators, physicians and industry now all starting to partner together to see how we move forward, how we study this in this patient population, but how we improve trial design to look, a look at late risk. I think really we've seen a huge uh, harmonization of the field and how we get together to do this. And so I would have never imagined that industry, the FDA and clinicians would all be on the same page, but this has really united everybody to put patients first to figure out how we study this best in the future.